So let me just deviate a little bit from our current project. What I have on the screen is two heads. The one on the left follows the subdivision approach where we start with a base mesh and we divide a topology to start adding details. The one on the right is essentially a digital piece of clay and every time that we run the DynaMesh process, ZBrush Core is going to analyze the topology and redistribute or regenerate new polygons so that we can maintain an even distribution of polygons across the entire model. So take a look at this. Let me move a piece from the forehead on the left model. And when I do that, the polygons are getting stretched. And adding details in this area will be really difficult because we really don't have enough topology or geometry to sit there and work with. So let's test this out on the DynaMesh head over to the right. And turn on polyframes. You'll see that there's a lot of difference here. The polygons are still getting stretched. However, if we go to the geometry sub palette, and let's go ahead and open up the DynaMesh options here. Let's just make sure DynaMesh is actually enabled, okay? Indicated by the orange switch here, now you know that it's enabled. And we can go ahead and hold control, click and drag on the canvas, and release a click. And ZBrush Core is going to reorganize the topology and the polygons to account for the new volumes that we just added on the forehead. So right about now you're probably asking, what's the point? What's the difference in these two and which one should I work with? Well, there are advantages and disadvantages to working with each one. But I'll give you my two cents worth on which one I think works best, uh, especially for sculpting creative creatures in ZBrush Core. The advantage of the subdivision approach is that you can have multiple subdivision levels. Let me show you what that means. If we select the head on the left, and let's go ahead and check the subdivision slider here from the geometry sub palette. Okay, you see that I have a few subdivision levels indicated by the number here. Now I can move up and down in resolution simply by moving the slider from left to right. And this is great because you can add finer detail in higher subdivision levels. Let me show you what that means. So we can sculpt things with high detail. Let's go into the lips here and kind of work on that. Okay, and make a little, little bit of adjustment, add some uh, details here. Okay, and then simply move back. Let's go back to the lower level subdivisions and we can make larger portion changes, just like so. So the cool thing about the subdivision levels here is that we can go back to the higher level and we can see all the detail is still intact. Both subdivision and DynaMesh are great ways to approach sculpting, but just as a note and something to remember, if you want to use subdivision levels, you probably want to make sure that you're completely happy with the base mesh. You know, it'll be difficult as you move down the road to change that topology later. Now with DynaMesh, you really have total freedom to explore shapes and sculpt without any reservations with the topological restrictions or, or any technical constraints too, which is why we are going to continue using DynaMesh for the rest of these lessons. So I have an example here of a really low resolution model. So when I start sculpting on it, it really doesn't look very good. And the reason for this is that because we have our resolution set so low, which is great while you know, you're, you're working on the foundations, but when we get into detailing higher resolutions, we really want to crank up that resolution of the DynaMesh. So let's just do that here. Right now it's set to about 200. Let's crank that up a little bit. Let's try about 400. And I like to do this incrementally. Um, you don't want to go to the max right away, but let's just do this and I'll show you real quick. And now let's click and drag and get more resolution. And there you go. Now it looks nice and we can start sculpting finer detail on that. Hey, if you like these videos, be sure and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, thanks for watching.